So I was at the gym this morning, and I happened to notice something on the TV, which I normally don't look up at the TVs, but something caught my eye, and it was a weed eater or an edger. But the reason it caught my eye is because it was by the brand Works. Works, right? And that's the same brand of my drill. And I've used this drill for six years, and it's a pretty stinking cheap drill, and I, I promised myself I would wait to buy new drills until this impact and the other drill broke that are by works. I've mixed concrete with that other drill and the drill is smoking, but it hasn't broken. So I said, when these break, I'm gonna pick up some DeWalt's cause that's what most of my other battery powered tools are. That way they can be consistent. But this infomercial on the TV was talking about how good it was, well I wasn't listening, but I was reading captions, how good this weed eater was, how good this edger is. Okay, just for the fun of it, let's see if we can find this. I think this is it. Presentation from works. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's so much better with sound. Nothing offends these members of the Mount Parnassus <laughs> This is so good! Club like an eclectic lawn, and they're here to do something about it. Oh and my goodness! All new works GT <laughs> <laughs> that is such a creative take! And I'm watching all these people use it and not break their backs, and it was kind of funny. I didn't know infomercials were still a thing. And then it said, TV only deal. This deal is only available on this commercial for this limited time period. And most edgers cost you $200, but this one is a battery powered edger that only will cost you three payments of $39.99. 40, 80, 120, $120. So I grabbed my phone and I'm like, all right, let's check online. It's cheaper on Amazon. I thought that's funny because they gotta pay for the commercial somehow. All right, so today we are going to build a heat box. And the temptation is to overcomplicate the heat box. I so badly wanna overbuild this, but I know a couple things right now. Time matters and space matters, and I don't want something that's bigger or something unnecessary that I don't need. Like the workbench, I was gonna overbuild that, and here as well, I wanted to build something massive and overcomplicate it and make it in such a way that has a design that I've never seen before for efficiency. No, really just because I want to build a, a fun project. So, I've completely simplified this process. We're gonna make a simple, simple heat box in order to cure Bozen, because that's the goal. So let's spend less time on the heat box and get it to the point we need to so I can spend more time on the bows. That's the goal today. quarter inch plywood behind me that I'm gonna build the heat box out of. I'm also gonna put it on casters so I can roll it around the shop easily and move it if I need to. We're gonna go three feet tall and two feet wide. That should be plenty deep for us. We're gonna build the heating element on the bottom of the heat box and then I'm gonna put railing over top of it so that the bows can sit on that railing and we won't hit the heating elements at all.
also gonna make it eight foot long. That way I can just use the full length of the plywood as well as making sure it's extra long, long enough. Now I'm never gonna make an eight foot bow really, but if I'm building something that's 66 inches long, then I have that fire hose in there that's gonna compress inside the bow form and that hose sticks out the ends. And with my last heat box, I had a hard time fitting it in there and it was a 72 inch heat box. So we're gonna go ahead and go up to an eight foot heat box in order to make sure we have enough room lengthwise. As far as the width goes, I'm gonna go two feet on that. And that should be enough to fit three to four bows in there and that's gonna be plenty good for what I need to do. So welcome back to the cave on this beautifully hot day in the springs. Today, we're building a heat box. progress but I've got the casters on and now I gotta flip it over not sure how this is gonna go but let's give it a go how do you like flip how? maybe I should just go to the side Now the trouble is, once I lift this, it could roll. Hey, that was so bad. Not so bad. So I should have counted for the casters. That's what I didn't really account for, was how high that was gonna come up off of the ground. And so far it's, well, come up quite a bit. Is that too tall though? Okay, so I got my pointer. Here's the idea. That under this line is where we put all of the heating elements down low. And then I will put two by fours along the wall and build kind of a rack so that I can set the bow on top of the rack and keep it away completely from the heating element. So that way it fits well and you're not running into the baseboard heater or any light bulb heaters.
The heat box is complete, so here's a quick tour. Hinges to make it easy to open the door. We've got a door stop here and a door stop there. Temperature gauge for reading temperature. Makeshift handle, that works really well. The door stops are working great. Power cable to the outlet. Baseboard heater for heating the heat box. Reptile heat lamp for a little extra punch. Insulation everywhere. Wood slats to lay the bow form on. Casters to make it easy to roll around. Process will go like this. I'll need to put the bow in the heat box. So you just open the heat box and then you can come over, grab the bow. All right, if I can do it one-handed, I think we'll be good to go. Drop it down and go make a bow or go shoot a bow. Either way, I'll see you on the next video. Oh, and if you make one of these, don't let a heat bulb hit your wood. It's not safe. But safety's never been the number one thing in my life. <laughs>